Viewers, this is another uh, quick tutorial on mesh types in Abacus and how to adjust different mesh types or what kind of differences there are and what important to keep in mind. So here we have a simple geometry body and we are in the mesh menu in Abacus. Uh, so this is where you assign the mesh control to generate the mesh and to select mesh types. And here you have uh, additional element type adjustments depending on the mesh type you select. When you go first with this option, the default is always to generate the hex, which are cubical based geometries. And if the geometry is extremely simple, you get the simplest form of generation, which is structured approach. Um, you will have equally spaced, equally sized elements. So I'll just go forward and mesh this just to show you what happens. Um, before that, just to, this is an automatically generated mesh size. So based on general dimensions, it's a uh, suggest a dimension of two. If I apply the seeding, you can see the distance between those cubes eventually. And if I generate, do a meshing of the part, you will see that you will have these uh, cubes. Um, so this is the basic part with a basic mesh. Um, in this menu of meshing, there's an approach of sweep, which is more suitable for a more difficult geometry. Using advancing front, so it starts from a certain side and moves to the other side. Or a medial axis, it figures out the center line of such a geometry or evolves along a certain line which you can choose uh, as a sign direction and pa uh, pass and direction. Uh, what's important here um, for this geometry, it doesn't matter. And if I use this, um, I will actually have the same, almost the same geometry or actually the same geometry in this case. Um, another approach for more complicated geometries is to use hex dominated. So most mesh elements will be cubical or hex based. Uh, but in case there's a geometry that's like a rounded edge or a more complicated geometry, then some of them will not be hex, but will be a tet, uh, which is a pyramidal element shape. So it will be a mix of both to still get the geometry entirely meshed. But in this case, again, it doesn't matter what I select, it will almost always be the same cube geometry. Except when I force it to be a tet, then it will be this pyramidal shape. So I'll show you before I go into the menu, what does it look like? So now I switch to tet, and this is how it looks like. So it's actually uh, like pyramids uh, assembled together uh, to, to form those, those cubes. Um, these have advantages in the calculation. You have a bit more detail. But they also have some disadvantages when you have high plasticity deformation, if you're like stretching a metal part or something. So it depends actually on the simulation. If it's totally elastic, the mesh type doesn't much influence things. If there are contacts between the parts, then it's a bit more sensitive. We will get into that in a bit. Um, if I go again and select what other options there are here. So in the TET, uh, again, I can use a default algorithm, but I can choose this option where the mesh, uh, the internal geometries will tend to grow to be larger than the geometries you see on the surface. So all the, the mesh uh, elements inside the volume will be slightly larger. And here I can choose what's the ratio of the increasing in size. So the second layer internally will be by 1.3 larger, and then the second 1.3 and 1.3. This is a bit excessive, so like a ch an increase of about 10% is more usually reasonable. Um, there are not much options here, so these are like the most important part of this. Uh, then there's the, the wedge shape, which are like pizza slices, a bit thick pizza slices. For this geometry, also I will show you what it looks like. So these would, would look like this. So it's a triangle that's extruded, right? Thick pizza slices. And this for this geometry, this is quite easy. And from this side, it looks like they are squares, but actually you can see here. There are, there are extruded triangles. So this is mainly it for the, the um, element shape. If you go back to the basic hex and back to structure, which was the easiest, simplest, and actually this is one of the most consistent, uh, or useful and accurate element types for almost all kinds of simulations. So this is the one that's always mostly recommended. You can see more details about this type of element by going here to the element type. And then you can see by default, what we have here is a hex. Um, it is in standard simulation, so here it's just working in standard. In Xvis, you'll have some different settings. Um, and the, this is a linear, meaning there's not much divisions uh, in, in the polynomial description of this 
start of this uh, element um, if you go to quadratic you'll have a bit more uh, let's say um, a refined curve than in the linear approach something in basic mathematics you should know as an engineer uh, in the hex type you have a hybrid formulation which the, usually improves the contact so if you have any two parts are in contact there's pressure of one part on the other so there's you know stresses due to contact a hybrid formulation improves that and hybrid formulations add a bit of nodes on the element um, um, and and calculates more accurate stresses uh, that come from two different bodies in contact uh, just by choosing a hex you'll have the element name is called c3d20 so it's a three-dimensional body with about 20 points that describe it and if I with reduced integration it will a bit simplify the calculation and calculate faster but for a high accuracy simulation I will shut it down and that will be like the default best if I have two bodies in contact I'll turn on the hybrid mode to calculate more accurately contract stresses contact stresses and this is a 3d stress body so this is the default for hex if i go quickly uh to a tet which is another common mesh if the jump is really complicated or very difficult to just mesh in cubes again i can go to the uh, element types i can also see a linear and quadratic and that something i often use is i, I would need hybrid formulation for contact and I would often need a modified formulation if there is a high plasticity so if I'm simulating some metal part that's strongly bending then it would be recommended to use modified formulation for large deformation and recommended to do to use hybrid formulation if I'm using contact so I'm using like a two parts that are bending or one part pushing the other part to bend uh, sometimes something important in some simulations where you get a lot of errors, a lot of elements are highly de highly stretched or highly deformed. It's, to, it's good to turn on element deletion, unless that specific element is, is the area where you want to simulate and the stress where you really need to evaluate. So you shouldn't delete that element. Uh, but if the, uh, this extreme high stress due to singularity is happening at a corner that's not important to the to your investigation you could choose element deletion to just keep the simulation running without re just stopping and giving you an error because of element distortion and that would be mainly it